High refresh rate monitors under Xorg are certainly strange to say the least. Now, for the sake of Xorg, I'm considering anything above 60 hertz to be high refresh rate. Now, I know that by modern standards, 75, for example, is not a high refresh rate, but it is for Xorg, and anything above 60 is going to require at least a little bit of tinkering. Now, for a single monitor, it's perfectly fine. There's like one or two commands you need to run. Where you start seeing a little bit of issues is with multi-monitor setups. Now, they do work. Contrary to the mountains of forum posts saying they don't, it's just that a lot of people seem to have absolutely no idea how to do troubleshooting. Now, while there are probably GUI tools that can do what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing everything straight through XRander just because I know this is going to work. I don't know if ARANDA actually has everything available that we actually need to be using. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you actually have XRANDA installed, at least on Arch Linux. That's going to be in the XORG dash xrander package now on a lot of other distros it is going to be pre-installed i believe on ubuntu it is i can't guarantee on other things it's going to be if it's not installed usually it's in a package called xorg xrander if it's not in that package just check what it is for your distro this is going to be the application that does everything we need xrander is basically a program that lets you configure things like your monitor layout resolution the refresh rate, and a bunch of other things, but the only thing we care about today is going to be the refresh rate. Running XRANDA without any arguments is going to list out all of the monitors you currently have attached. Now, it doesn't matter if the monitor is attached or not, XRANDA can go and disable monitors that you don't want to be using. So in this case, my main monitor, the one that actually is the high refresh rate monitor, is the one connected to DisplayPort 0. Make sure you get this name exactly correct, because XRANDA is going to be case sensitive. So it might be something like EDP1 if you're using a laptop and you're using the internal display, or it might be something like HDMI 0 if you're using HDMI instead, or maybe you have DVI, whatever it is you have, get the name, this is what we need. Now, you might notice that some of the refresh rates in here don't line up with the numbers that make sense in your head. So things like 74.97, 99.93, 143.98. These are the actual refresh rates the monitor is going to be running at. But we typically round them up just because it's easier to work with. Things like 164.92, that would be 165 hertz. Now, even though I have these extra monitors plus plugged in, XRANDA does have the ability to go and disable monitors in XORG, so it doesn't actually matter, I can still demonstrate this single monitor setup. So if we want to go and select a refresh rate, so right now I'm running at 165, so let's go and drop it down to 144. Find the value you want to go and run it at, so in this case 143.98. Round it up to the sensible numbers, so from that number to 144, and then we go and run xrander-r 144. Now, we don't actually need to care about the name of the monitor, because if we're running it with a single monitor, xrander is going to know, okay, we'll run it with the main monitor, and you'll be good to go. Now, when you run that command, I have no idea if that actually killed my camera. Hopefully it didn't. When you run that command, your screen will go black for a moment. It did actually freeze the recording of my desktop, though, so that's why the command didn't seem like it disappeared. But if we go and run XRANDER again, as we can see, now it's actually selected 143.98, and if you go and run some sort of refresh rate test, maybe you go and play a game and you go and do VSync, that should lock it at 144 or whatever you'd gone and set it to. Honestly, a good way to demonstrate it is if you're going from 60 up to 144 or whatever high refresh rate you're going to, go and grab a window and then move it around. And you'll notice it should be considerably smoother than it otherwise would be. Now, in your case, you know, the video is still running at 30 FPS, so it looks horrible, but you get my point. Go and test it and you'll see what I mean. Now, keep in mind that when you set something through XRANDA, it's only going to be set for the current XORG session. So if you go and quit XORG and then restart it, or you go and reboot your system, all of your settings you set through XRANDA are going to be completely gone. 
You can get around this by adding any of the commands you want to run into a startup script that runs after Xorg runs. Let's say you have your window manager or desktop environment run it whenever those actually open up. Or in my case, what I do is because I want to sometimes swap between having one monitor, two monitors, or three monitors available, I actually add it into a configuration script and then I can easily jump between them. Or if you're really weird, you could just rerun the command every single time you boot your system. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but if you really want to, then that option is available. I'm just trying to save you at least, you know, a tiny bit of time. Now, if you're running a multi-monitor setup like I am, you might have noticed that when you ran that command, all of your other monitors, except for the main one, stayed off. They didn't come back on. That's because when you run the xrandr-r option, it assumes you just want to run a single monitor and doesn't care about the rest of them. That's a problem, but luckily it can be fixed. Now there may be a way to run this within a single xrandr command, but I've never actually got it to work, so I just run multiple commands and everything works exactly as it should. The first thing I always do is go on xrandr-r and then set my refresh rate. That's perfectly fine, the monitors have turned off, we can go and re-enable them. So in my case, my secondary monitors are DisplayPort-1, which is to the left of my main monitor, and then HDMI-A-0, and that is to the right of my main monitor. So what we need to go and do is firstly go and turn those back on. So that is going to be xrandr-output, then the name of the output you want to be using, so display port dash one, and then dash dash mode, and then the resolution you actually want to run it at. So obviously it has to be a resolution within this table, but most of the time you're going to want to run it at whatever the highest resolution actually is. So in this case, 1920 by 1080. And then we can keep chaining these output commands together for every single extra monitor that we have. So dash dash output then HDMI dash A dash zero dash dash mode 1920 by 1080. Now you've probably already noticed, but all of your secondary monitors are now duplicating the main monitor. That's intentional, we're gonna fix that as well. The reason why it's like that is because by default, Xorg is gonna do duplication because it doesn't actually know where those monitors should be placed within the grand scheme of the monitor layout. And luckily fixing that is fairly easy because Xrandr has some predefined locations where your monitor could be located. Things like left of, right of, above and below. Now I didn't mention this earlier, but if you wanna do things like have one of your monitors be rotated, that can be done with the rotate option as well. That should be run with the previous command we ran. I don't use a monitor like that though, so I just didn't bother to cover it. Now these will cover 99% of use cases. If you need to have one that is, you know, slightly off alignment for whatever reason so the mouse doesn't easily move across, you can go and do that. It's just not something I'm going to be covering today. So what we need to do is go run xrandr dash dash output, and then the output we need to be including, at least the way that I like to do it, is going relative to our main monitor, so displayport dash zero. Then I can go and say that our secondary monitor is going to be right of the main monitor, so that is display port dash one, and then the other monitor is going to be to the left of that, and that is HDMI dash A dash zero. And you'll notice that your monitors may blank out for a second if you don't have them already with the exact same configuration, and then it should be good to go. Running xrandr at this point, you'll notice that even though we've gone and run a bunch of extra xrandr commands, our refresh rate is still set to what it needs to be set to. This is what we want to see. Going over to a website like UFO Test, you'll see this is running at 165 hertz or whatever refresh rate you've got it set to. This actually is working. Except, okay, this is where people don't know how to do any troubleshooting. So I noticed that when I first tried to run this, my mouse was running at 165 hertz perfectly fine, but if I moved around a window, it was clearly not running at 165, it was running at 60. This is actually expected behavior because 99% of people on Linux are running compositors at this point, and compositors, I've realized, are the source of all of our problems. Whether you're using Kwin, Mudder, or maybe someone else's Pycom configuration, 
it's very likely you have V-Sync enabled. V-Sync can be very useful to make sure you have much less screen tearing, but I've never seen a single implementation of V-Sync from any compositor that does it properly or does it well. It doesn't seem to be a problem on Wayland, it just seems to be a problem based on how old Xorg is and how Xorg was never made around having multiple monitors plugged into it. What it does is it goes and V-Syncs around whatever the lowest refresh rate in the setup actually is. So in my case, that would be 60 Hertz and then everything runs at 60 Hertz. That's why when you have a single monitor and you're running V-Sync, it still works fine because it's gonna V-Sync based on the 165. Or if you have, you know, two monitors both running at 120, it's gonna be fine. It's mixed refresh rates where it does not work properly and it's probably never gonna be fixed. So first thing you need to do when you're troubleshooting, disable V-Sync. Better yet, disable the compositor. Get rid of it for the sake of testing bring it back. If the problem comes in, you know that it's going to be the V-Sync. Now, while you're trying to troubleshoot this issue, a lot of the things you may want to use to troubleshoot will not actually be working. So my monitor actually has an FPS counter built into it, which will not actually work because Xorg is going to be trying to run at 165. It's just the compositor, which is going to be lowering it down. So the monitor is still thinking it's actually running at that 165 FPS, even though it's definitely not. Xrander is still going to report that you're at whatever you've set it to because Xorg thinks that's what it's set to. So neither of those are going to work. You sort of have to go and test it through games and also test it by your eye. If you've got a 60 hertz monitor in your chain and a 165, seeing the window movement isn't as smooth as it should be is very, very noticeable. Now, everything I've said today is from the context of being an AMD GPU user. I haven't found any reports online with people actually troubleshooting it properly, getting rid of their compositor, saying that this shouldn't work if you're using NVIDIA. By all accounts, mixed refresh rates should work exactly the same between both of the cards. I'm pretty sure for Intel there wouldn't be any issues as well, but you're probably not until the intel gpus come out you're probably not running 165 on an intel chip anyway but on the ones that actually matter right now i think it should be fine but i cannot confirm it if someone has an nvidia card and can test it for me that would be very very helpful another thing i have not been able to confirm is whether mixed refresh rates will get in the way of things like free sync or g-sync functioning properly I do have a FreeSync monitor, but I don't have the tools to properly test if FreeSync is actually running. It certainly seems like it's running, but without properly testing it, I cannot really say one way or the other. But ultimately, if you're playing a game, it's better to just be using a single monitor anyway, just so you don't have the extra overhead of driving any of the other screens. For anyone who's curious, this is the script I'm actually using to configure my monitors. Basically, I take in the names of the monitors so I can just go and easily reference them throughout the script. Then I go and set my refresh rate. I'll talk about what this one does in a later video. Keep an eye out for that one. And then based on the thing that I actually select, let's say main plus second, I will then go and turn the second monitor on and then set where the monitor should be placed in my layout. Pretty basic stuff, and this basically gets everything I need done. Now, all of this stuff I've been doing with XRander can be configured within the XORG configuration file, so it'll be automatically set when you actually launch up XORG. I don't like to do it like that because I like to have this very easy way to go and configure stuff, and I don't really ever have a way that I want it to be set up by default. Sometimes I want two monitors if I'm just like, you know, doing my regular day-to-day -day stuff. Some days I want to have three monitors when I'm recording these videos. So for me, it doesn't make any sense. If you want to go and do that, though, I'll leave a link to the Arch Wiki down below, and you can go and work out the absolute insane configuration format you actually need to go and do this. This is the other reason I have no interest in actually touching this, because what is this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. That's too many options. Let me just let me just go and set stuff and we'll be good to go. That's why XRand is great and will save you a bit of time. This has been supported in XORG for quite a while, and I would like more people to know that you actually can run mixed refresh rates. You don't need to buy a bunch of very expensive monitors. It runs perfectly fine. 
I don't know what else to say. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Johnny Barapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brother Ops and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five of YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.